congregation would like to gather outside. You go there. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we will share the victory over death and life with him forever in God. So we ask God to bless this fire. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Make this new fire holy. Set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us into the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power forever and forever. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us.
Can't see it. May the, light. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from before us. Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Christ our light.
Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the victorious trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth in glory, revealing the splendor of your creation. Radiant in the brightness of your triumphant King, Christ has conquered, now his life and glory fill you. Darkness has vanished forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exult in glory. The risen Savior, our Lord of life, shines up upon you. Let all God's people sing and shout for joy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right and good that with hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, Father Almighty, the unseen God, through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has saved us by his death, paid the price of Adam's sin, and reconciled us once again to you. Glory to you forever. For this is the Passover feast, when Christ, the true Lamb of God, is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all the faithful. Glory to God forever. This is the night when you first saved our ancestors, freeing Israel from her slavery and leading her safely through the sea. This is the night when, when Christ Jesus vanquished hell, broke the chains of death, and rose triumphant from the grave. Glory be to you forever. This is the night when all who believe in him are freed from sin, restored to grace and holiness, and share the victory of Christ. Glory be to you forever. This is the night that gave us back what we had lost beyond our deepest dreams. You made even our sin a happy fault. Glory to you forever. Most blessed of all nights, evil and hatred are put to flight and sin is washed away, lost innocence regained and mourning turned to joy. Glory to you forever. Night truly blessed, when hatred is cast out, peace 
and justice find a home, and heaven is joined to earth, and all creation reconciled to you. Glory to you forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in this our Easter joy, accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. This wax, the work of bees, and the hands of your ministers. Glory to you forever. As we gaze upon the splendor of this flame, fed by melting wax conceived by Mother Bee, grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light. For Christ the morning star has risen in glory. Christ is risen from the dead and his flame of love still burns within us. Christ sheds his peaceful light on all the world. Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we have begun our solemn vigil. Let us now listen attentively to the Word of God and hear the record of His saving deeds recalling how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his son to be our redeemer. Through this Easter celebration, may God bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. The story of creation in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Then, over the coming days, God creates the heavens and the earth, land and sea, plants and animals. Then, on the fifth day, God said, Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, 
because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Recalling the crossing of the Red Sea in Exodus. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. 
During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then Moses stretches his hands again and the sea returns and drowns the Egyptian. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses 
to lead them out of slavery. Free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Recalling the valley of dry bones in the book of the prophet Hezekiah. Hezekiah <coughs> excuse me, is taken by the Spirit of the Lord and sees a valley of dry bones and he is called to prophesy over them and they come together but have no life. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy, son of man, and say to it. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Therefore, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your, la your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
please stand. Lord God of our salvation, you speak to the world of your scattered people and bring up our life from the valley of death. Breathe your spirit upon your church that we may live and stand before you, confident in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please blow out your candles? Gloria in excelsis Deo. Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God in the same way. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. 
He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those who have travelled with us through Holy Week, and particularly through the last three days, will know that we've been reflecting on the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit that we familiarly seem, the Holy Spirit the Comforter, the Holy Spirit the Inspirer, the Holy Spirit the Bringer of Peace and Joy but instead a term that appeared in the watch and pray material halfway through Lent, the Holy Spirit, the disruptor. And we've been thinking about how our lives can often be disrupted by God. We may know what we want him to have us do. We may know what we would like to do, but often God intervenes and the Holy Spirit disrupts the way that we see things. And that's certainly something that we've heard this evening in our Vigil of Readings, as the Holy Spirit, as God intervenes in our history and disrupts what people would have thought would happen or what people wished would happen. And then we hear of Mary Magdalene and Mary coming to the tomb. And the last word of Mark's Gospel, the last word that we heard this evening, isn't, and they were filled with joy and wonder and hope and peace, the last word is, they were afraid because they are amazed and confused and they don't yet know what to make of what they've just been told. For those early disciples, this moment is a moment of disruption, a moment when their understanding of God, their understanding of Jesus, their understanding of themselves and their own journeys of faith are turned upside down as they come to the tomb and Jesus is not there. He has risen from the dead. Yesterday, we thought as we came to the foot of the cross about the words that Reverend Amanda had left us with on Wednesday about letting go and letting God. And we were encouraged to place at the foot of the cross those things that we need to let go, those things we cling on to, those things that we hide behind, those things that separate us from God and from one another, and to simply place them into God's hands at the foot of the cross and allow him to be with us and allow him to hold those things. And tonight we come to the waters of the font. We come to the joy of the new Easter life. And perhaps as we gather around the font and are sprinkled with the water, we may think about what God fills us with if we place those things before him. If we are prepared to let go, then God will fill us with something new, with something wonderful, his life and his presence. And so tonight we rejoice. We rejoice that God showers his love upon us as the waters are showered upon us. We rejoice that God takes those things that we need to let go and replaces them with his life. And so tonight, let us pray that we may be guided by that spirit and that we may be truly open to where it leads, but through all of it to recognize that we do so walking constantly with the risen Christ, filled with his life, filled with his joy and filled with his peace. So I'm going to invite you to join us at the font and to bring with you your candles as we renew our baptismal promises.
ask the waters of our font to be blessed. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the waters of this font the grace of your Son. You created us in your own likeness. Cleanse us from sin in a new birth of innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send your Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in death of baptism, rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may also rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew those promises made at our own baptisms, for in baptism God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you turn away from sin? I do. do you reject evil? I do. do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do. do you trust in him as Lord? I do. My brothers and sisters, let us also affirm with all who are baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church.
the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia. So wherever we are, let's be aware of that peace of Christ showered upon us and find ways to share that peace with others.
Lord of life, with unbounded joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let it gift up your hearts. We to you, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restore to men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady, Faith and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I Can I suggest you extinguish your candles to receive communion? Communion will be administered from the chalice standing in the centre of the dais if you wish to receive by intinction only, by the bread being dipped into the cup for you then please go to the Paschal Candle. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. If you to do the choir.
Christ. The body of Christ.
Lord, you have nourished us with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia.
rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, bore joy to the whole world, grant that, aided by the prayers of his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may know the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 